What could Putin's next move be and how will that affect us? What is it that he's going to be doing? And are we dealing with a madman? And I'm, at the end of this video, we're going to talk about how we need to be prepared for this type of situation. So if you're new to my channel, I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. My name is Charles. I'd like to welcome you to this channel. I've got a lot of emails and a lot of different comments and everything on this whole situation on what's going on, how to be prepared, what can we do, and all these things. I'm going to try to answer some of those today in a very quick manner, as fast as I can. You see, folks, we just don't know what the future does hold with the whole situation that is taking place to the Ukraine people. And I just want to say right off the get-go here, my thoughts and prayers go out to all those people that are, are either having to leave their country and go to safe havens in other countries or that have decided to stay behind and fight right along with their military to try and save their country. They are very determined people and we have to keep them in our thoughts and prayers at this point in time. So let's get started on this video. First off, what is taking place over there? Well, as we all know, right now, Russia has invaded Ukraine. They have moved into the main heart of Ukraine. As the time of this video, they have not taken Kiev yet. They haven't done any of this. They haven't been able to overthrow the Ukraine military and all the people that have took up their arms. Putin is very, very disappointed in the momentum of his war because he thought it was going to be something that was overwhelming to all the people and the military there. He figured when he started to come in, everybody would put down their weapons and surrender. His goal in this whole situation is to overthrow the government, get rid of the president that is there and put his own puppet in place that will do whatever he wants him to do. He needs a yes man. That's what Putin likes. Putin doesn't like people that question him or demonstrate against him. Look what has happened in Russia itself. Thousands and thousands of people have took to the streets protesting this war. It just goes to show you, you cannot judge those people by one man's actions. You have to sit back and look at those people. Those people don't want this war. Those people want peace. But the leader of the country wants war. He wants to bring back the old Soviet Union is what he wants. He wants to reclaim all that land. He wants to have the power and everything else. Now, if you didn't notice also, China has basically thrown good old Putin under the bus. And the reason they did it was somebody in China did the math. You see, follow me on this, folks. Russia and China, yes, they do trading back and forth and everything else. But China and America do way more trading back and forth. If something happened in China lost America as far as importing and exporting, it would destroy their economy as they know it. And they have figured that out. So that's why the other day they came out with a statement in general condemning what was taking place. China is sitting back and watching what is taking place. Now there's all this talk all over YouTube, all over the news, and everything else as China to take Taiwan. <clears throat> but here's the thing, folks. China is watching what is going on in Russia 
and Ukraine. And they're watching to see what plays out and what happens with all the NATO allies and how they deal with this situation. You see, they're kind of using Russia as a scapegoat, if you would. They want to see what's going to play out. They're going to sit back and they're going to watch and take notes. That's what's taking place. What does all this mean for me and you? What it means for us is we're looking at paying higher gas prices. We know that. If you don't know that by now, then you've been living under a rock. But we're going to be paying more prices for everything. Inflation is going through the roof as we speak. Now, supposedly at some point, the Fed is going to be raising the interest rates to try to bring things back into check. And a lot of people think that, well, when they do that, it's going to even hurt us a little more as far as economy growth and new jobs and all this type of stuff. We'll have to wait and see how this perfect storm all plays out, folks. Food prices have gone through the roof. We already have seen that. We still have food shortages in a lot of areas. We still have a lot of things that are going on. You don't hear much about Charlie Victor 19 anymore now, do you? One has to believe, and the proof is in the pudding, when something majorly as war has broken out, it takes top of the list of what people talk about. You notice the CDC the other day all of a sudden decided to drop a lot of mass mandates and and everything else and they're doing all this kind of stuff and you heard about it for about 10-15 minutes and then everything went back to the war. It's all swept underneath the table now folks. So what are some of the things that we can do to be prepared in case of a massive cyber attack against our country? Rather he goes after our infrastructure, our critical infrastructure. He goes after cell phone towers. If he drops an EMP, if he does any of these type of things, goes after the satellites, goes after the stock market, shutting it down, whatever it may be, you know that he has the people and the technology to do this. But we also have to believe that we have people that are watching out for this and hopefully they can be a little bit smarter than the other guy on the other side. But time will tell. We can't predict the future. But you can be prepared. You want to make sure that you have all different types of things. Number one, if the grid and everything goes down, how are you going to get power? Do you have generators? Do you have battery banks? How are you going to get power? How are you going to power those things? You need extra gas for your generator. You need to have solar panels for your battery banks so you can charge those things. Do you have stable food in your home? Do you have food that doesn't require so much, quote, cooking, open and ready? Do you have a lot of food that won't spoil, not in your refrigerator, not in your freezer? Do you have canned food, dry food? Do you have all those different types of things? Do you have ways of storing water? Do you have ways of filtering water? Do you have extra batteries, extra flashlights? Do you have an emergency plan? These are all things that you have to ask yourself and you have to be prepared for. I've done several different videos and stuff on this particular subject on how to be prepared. Folks, trust me, you need to be paying attention and you need to get prepared. So if you're new to this channel, I have a lot of different playlists that you can go in and watch. I have over 400 and some odd videos that you can go back and go through. I cover a lot of different topics. 
If you have questions, feel free to email me if you do not want to put your question on the video that you're watching. Some people don't like to do that. I get a lot of emails and people ask a lot of different questions and stuff. Some people like the more one-on-one -on -one approach, which I'm perfectly fine with. That's why I put it there. That's why I have an email. You can also comment in the sections of videos. Comment in the section of this video. What do you think is going to take place? What is Putin's plan? One thing to remember, folks, in closing. You have to stay calm. Try not to get overwhelmed. And you need to try to be proactive in being prepared. A plan will help you do that. That's why I have preached that in so many of my videos is having an emergency plan that will help take the stress off in case of an emergency. So once again, this is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. My name is Charles. I'd like to thank all of you for joining me today. Please hit the like button, comment if you wish, and do me a favor, share all these videos. If they help you out, if they make you think, if they make you take the blinders off and try to look outside the box, then pass it on to your friends and your family so that maybe they will also see the importance of being prepared. So until next time, folks, I'll catch all of you on the flip side. Thank you.